The holidays don't have to mean unhealthy diet landslide, if you think about it. We're going to show you it's possible to celebrate without compromising your health. Speaking of health, I have a really bad cold. Yeah. So if my voice sounds wonky, no need to tell me in the comments. And if she starts coughing, don't worry about it. She's fine. <laughs> you know, with clever strategies, you can enjoy all the festive food that's coming your way and still stay on track with your wellness goals. I'm going to remind you of that statement. I, I did great in Thanksgiving. <laughs> Making wise choices now or risking starting the new year with regrets and setbacks in your health journey is a big choice you're going to do starting today. Now, if you're new here, I'm Mark and this is my wife, Jody. We don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather your lifestyle, your health, your relationships, and much more. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button. We want you to get notified when the new videos come out and do us a huge favor and share this video or one of our videos with other people that you know that are on their retirement journey too. Now you, you may be thinking, I'll eat what I want, when I want, whenever I want. And it's only it's a few meals and a few short periods of time, I'll be fine. But I used to think that way. <laughs> and my Thanksgiving plate? Not this uh, year. No. But it was heaping. I mean, yeah. turkey and stuffing and gravy and mashed potatoes and everything. And, I, you know, you want to get a little bit of everything, but I ended up getting a lot of everything. But I would just be done for two or three days, longer, and then leftovers the next day. I know. So it's just I have this feeling. It's like it's comfort food, and I want to have that feeling. The thing is, uh, it doesn't work anymore for me. Right. I'm, you know, and we're doing a much better job of paying attention to our health. And that's really helped us a lot. You know, you would always load up your plate and it was almost to the point where it was so noticeable to everyone at the table. That we needed bigger plates. That you would say, actually, during the holidays, I wish we had bigger plates. That's right. And with, with edges that went up <laughs> to contain all the gravy. A trough of sorts, yeah, right? A platter. Yeah. But, you know... I would tell you this, it makes it a lot easier to have to force yourself to go back for seconds than to fill your plate up and have that kind of worrisome guilt like your father used to put on us. Yeah. Who he would say, if you put it on your plate, you have to eat it. Right. And your mountain, you know, when it was on your plate, I know you used to hear your dad say that. Sure. And I, back then I could eat it. I was 30 years old. I right. can't do it now at right. 66. I just cannot do it. Now, before we jump in, we want to mention we have a free download we're going to put in the link below, Health and Wellness Worksheets. This is really going to help to give you a bigger holistic view of your health, which includes eating right. But today... We have a great session yeah. for you today. So grab a pen and paper because there's so many nuggets for you here, and we hope that they're practical and useful for you. And stay to the end because at the end, we're going to give you five strategies to reduce your stress during the holidays and also a three-step challenge to stay on track. So we are excited to get going. And the first tip is making sure you fuel your body to avoid overeating later. I used to always hmm. approach these big meals. I would starve myself. All Before, day. All day. I <laughs> yeah. wouldn't do apps. I wouldn't do anything. And you know what? That, it was kind of fun because then I could load up the plate. But we don't, I don't do that anymore. You yeah. know, I try to eat breakfast, lunch, and then when the big meal comes, I just try to taste everything. But I fuel my body. Well, yeah. And you have to include, you know, protein and fiber in your fuelings to make sure that you have lasting fullness right? And avoid even in the morning, those sugary cereals and pastries, right? Because those are just carbs that kind of run through you, you get the little spike, and then you crash. And once you start to ride that with your own body, you really start to figure out what works for you. Like I know in the morning for me, a shake or a smoothie works great, All right? And you're an oatmeal guy with fruits and nuts, and right. it works great. So even during the holidays, there's no reason for us to bust that routine. No. 100%. And the other thing is you want to make sure you you hydrate yourself well all morning until the big meal to kickstart your metabolism, which leads into number two, a tip is really to stay hydrated. 
all day. Yeah, and that's, all the time. It, and that's a that's a big one all the time. But during the holidays, it's so easy. I know over Thanksgiving when our kids were here, it'd be mid morning, and maybe everyone ate a little something, and then someone would say, "How about a mimosa or an aperol spritz?" Or you know, before you knew it, it was eleven o'clock, and you know, champagne was popping. And as we all know, alcohol is not a hydrator; it's a bit of a dehydrator. So staying hydrated throughout the day helps control your appetite, and certainly certainly helps you with your um, hydration levels. And if you follow us regularly, you know we talk about this a lot. We've dedicated multiple videos just to staying hydrated. Right. All right, number three, and this is where I've made a big change. I now eat more mindfully, right? Mm. I don't... You do. I don't just load up on a plate of food. Um, I focus on my food. I avoid distractions around me, but I I eat slowly, and I really enjoy... The taste. Well, you know, the Rollins family in general doesn't eat slowly. No. You know, I know my sister-in-law and I talk about this because we both came from families that enjoyed sitting at the table and eating slowly. So this has really been a mindful change for you to actually sit and enjoy your meal. I mean, you... We're always the first one done, even no matter how full your plate was. I can still do that. <laughs> but it's not healthy I, for you. Well, so, it was my dad's, you know, mentality that, you you know, you'll spend hours cooking, right? And you sit down and eat. And it was kind of a race to who gets to do the dishes first. He'd be clearing the plates. And your mom for, was still eating? Yeah, my mom, my mom took forever to eat. So right. I think that that is really a great tip for all of us to think about is to just eat slowly more mindfully, enjoy each taste, take a forkful, put your fork and knife down, take a rest, and listen, you know, listen to your body hunger cues. I yeah. mean, if you're full, right. you don't have to finish the plate. But the thing is, you have to pause to actually listen to your body to know whether you're full or not. Because if you're just continually shoveling, I know our daughter Jordan Jordan will say that to our boyfriend sometimes. Derek, take a pause, look up. Yeah. Look up, Derek, look up. And then you, you do realize that you're full. Well, it listen, it's a different mindset to yeah. eat that way. I mean, it's easy when the plate's there just to keep eating and just till it's all gone, but really enjoying the company, having conversations. Right, and it's easier during the holidays because all the food right. typically is not food that you have throughout the rest of the year, right? Right. So it's all kind of new tastes that you look forward to, and it brings tradition to mind. All right, so um, snacking. We all are big. And I'm, I'm a big snacker and treats. So the fourth tip is really to choose your snacks and your treats wisely yeah i mean avoid wasting your calories on you know unappealing options right you know allowing yourself a few indulgences without a lot of guilt well it's hard for me to when the hors d'oeuvre platter comes out you know i typically have gone towards the um the charcuterie charcuterie i don't do cheese but i do the meats with crackers just feels weird to grab a piece of pepper and chew on that or celery or carrots, but I'm getting better at that. You, you are. know, it's still, it's it's all. Th- listen, the reason we're doing this video is to help us change our mindset as we get older and go through the holiday season, so we just don't get off the right. rails. I mean, right. that's that's the thing. All right, the fifth tip would be to to bring a healthy dish to your holiday gatherings. You know, ensure that there's a healthy option there for you and your family, but also for everyone else at the gathering. You know, my daughter, Evan, loves baking that. And I don't know if you guys did this in your house, but we did it traditionally. That green bean casserole that has the the creamy soups and the, you know, the frizzled onions on top and it's cans of green beans. I mean, she wants to bring that to every gathering. And while people love it, you know, I kind of approached her this year and said, hey, I wonder if there's a healthy option to make that. No. And yeah, she wasn't down with it for sure. But focusing on vegetable-based dishes or whole grain dishes or even, you know, something that has, you know, maybe less mayonnaise or less, you know, kind of dill dip or something in it. Less breads. Dill dip? Well, you don't love dill dip. I, don't, I, have I don't like any kind of dips. But I'm, I'm giggling or laughing because I remember my mom, when we'd have friends come over, she'd tell me to tell them, make sure they don't bring that healthy plate of vegetables because no one wants to eat it. 
have them bring something like pigs in blankets or rolled up salamis. But it's different for us now. But yeah, bringing a healthy dish is really um, a good idea. Well, I would tell you that when you do bring a vegetable dip, dish, if you experiment with spices, I mean, something as easy as like the Lowry's salt. Season on, salt on sliced cucumbers. On sliced cucumbers. Love it. Can be a nice refreshing. How come we don't have that on a regular basis? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, and matter of fact, you slice them like cucumbers, like long, lengthways, and yeah, Lowry seasoning that. salt. So, I mean, experimenting with spices with your vegetables can up your game a little right. bit. The other thing is, and I'm guilty of this, if you get invited to a party, go to parties, don't go to parties hungry. Eat before you go. I mean, it's... I used it's, to do that on dates. You did? I did. Did you do that Back with me? My, no. When we dated? Back in my, like, probably early, mid-20s, I would always have a big bowl of cereal before I went oh, out to... Load up on sugar. Perfect. Before Avoid. I went out on a date, because then I wasn't, like, starving. Because I'm, I'm an eat, eater. Uh, you are not an eater. I, well, you I do used shakes. to be an eater. Well, <laughs> I love shakes. Listen, if you go to parties hungry, you're right. going to eat way too much. Right. You're going to drink too much, and you're going to feel like crap. So... Eat a light, healthy snack beforehand. You don't have to be the biggest eater when you go to a party. It's not that kind of contest. So make sure you have some fiber, some protein, and you know, be mindful again of your hunger and fullness cues. Don't load up so much where you don't eat because the host might not like that. But right. this goes back towards uh, helping you with portion control as well. Now, the seventh thing I would say is um, during the holiday season, and you're really good at this, I tend to kind of push the barriers a little bit, but limit your alcohol consumption, right? Because alcohol, we all know, adds empty calories and sugars. So it's easy to choose a lighter option or a spritz or even a seltzer with just some fruit in it. You know, some sort of alternative to an alcoholic drink. I mean, it's fun to celebrate, certainly New Year's Eve, pop the cork, sure. you know, have a glass of champagne. But just remember, you want to make sure that um, you limit the alcohol because alcohol can actually kind of be a gateway to different foods. Like for me, for example, I love a good margarita, but that's a gateway to chips and guac and salsa right. and queso. And I mean, that's my gateway. Well, that's right the whole there. thing here. You get out of control. You do. So if you can. But it, I love it, a good margarita. Particularly, you know, this time of year, there's party after party right. after party. So finding a way to limit alcoholic drinks or yep. eliminate them altogether a few nights just try it and see see how it feels but it's... i was talking to a friend this morning who did dry september that led him to dry october november and now he's on december really and he's committed his new year's resolution to dry 2024 good for him how about him that? or her him yeah yeah well friend. i drink very little so it's easier for me i've, yeah. I've worked through this because I and because a... you drink little i you know, certainly I'm not sitting here drinking by myself. No. It's for me, it's when the kids are here and we're right. all kind of playing games and right. having fun. But all right. portion control. Which we've touched on a bit. We did. We don't have to beat this up again, but that's been big for me. You know, the thing that you did for us, just the two of us when we have meals now, is we use the smaller plates. Right. And I had to get used to that because I always was brought up on, I don't know, eight, nine, ten inch plates to load it up. Now we have a small plate. And honestly, if I fill that, I'm pretty much full. But if I am hungry, I can go back. So, right. And the other thing we do is um, not just the amount of food, but what was the thing about the color? Well, Where, as much color as you can put on your plate with different vegetables. Right. You know, typically it's a healthier plate if you have more colors. If right. you get some purple, some beets, and some carrots, some orange you know, some yellow with some squash, you know, if you go all the way around kind of the rainbow of food, I think it's the, always a little better. I think the saying is the protein should be like as big as the palm of your hand. Yeah, so there's a half of, of a chicken breast and then surround it with vegetables, which mm -hmm. we're, we're really doing much better with that. And it, it, we feel better. Yeah. And that really leads to the next kind of tip, you know, make sure you're focusing on fruits and vegetables, right? These nutrient dense, low in calories foods that can fill you up. And I would Fill up on those before moving to, you know, the higher calorie options. Right, makes so sense. even if the appetizers come out and maybe there's celery and hummus or carrots and hummus or something. Or cucumber with um, the Lowry salt. Lowry seasoning salt. I bet you're all you're all gonna run out and get that now because I'm just chafing at the bit for I know you we're do. We're having love that for that. lunch. But if you go to those plates before you go to maybe something that I love, like a warm brie with like a fig melted, you know, over top with some really amazing crackers. 
I hit the fruits and veggies first, it kind of wards me off yeah. of the so heavier calories. Fruits I have in the morning, every morning. Vegetables, when we look for a recipe now, it's always a protein, fish, chicken, beef maybe, but mostly fish and chicken, and vegetables. Right. And we always steam some extra vegetables, but we try to fill up on that, like you said. Right. So our uh, naturopath doctor says that we should eat seven cups of vegetables a day. And that doesn't change during the holidays. No. No. Although we sometimes allow it to change during the holidays. And the purpose of this video is so it doesn't change during the holidays. Right. Now, number 10, and I love this one because I just joined a new gym yesterday. Stay active all the time. You know, I've really felt that my workouts are waning a little bit. So I joined a new gym. Well, we joined a new gym Saturday. Right. You had this cold, so you haven't been. But you really have to balance your eating with physical activity. And, yeah. and physical activity doesn't mean you can eat more. It really just helps keep the calories off, get rid of the unwanted calories. But gosh, going for um, a walk at the end of a big meal makes a lot of sense. Stay That's active. where Ruby's been helpful for us, I yeah, think. But We've staying, been walking a lot more. Staying active all day. You know, people comment that I interrupt you. Oh, did I just interrupt you? No, I interrupted you. Oh, that's okay. I'm supposed to let you finish your thought. Oh, well, okay. Go ahead, finish your thought. Well, I would just say uh, with staying active, you know, we did get Ruby, our brand new puppy, and um, she's keeping us both very active. Uh, I would say especially me. I'm in and out the door walking her and all of that. But you have to remember, too, your activity helps with digestion and stress management, and holidays can be stressful. So staying active, while it's our 10th tip, it probably should be one of the number one tips. How'd I do? You did great. Didn't interrupt you at all. Good. All right. Don't forget, stay to the end, because we're going to give you five strategies to reduce your stress during the holidays. My stress level seems to be going up already. I don't know why. Oh, jeez. Um, and then we're going to give you a three-step <laughs> challenge on how to stay on track during this holiday season. So, you know, number 11 is don't skip meals. I think I talked about this in the opening. You, you don't want to go a whole day and not eat so you can gorge when you get to the big meal. Right. Just don't. Have your breakfast, have your mid-morning snack, have your lunch. And that's going to really help you from overeating when you get to the big party. Yeah, well, and I would also say, and you're a, you're a regular three-plus meal-a-day guy. I'm not. You know, I don't mind skipping and doing some intermittent fasting and waiting till later in the day. And again, I think the meals during the holidays and your routines during the holidays, you just need to maintain. So I'm not going to add an extra meal in during the holidays just so I don't skip a meal, right? I remember... During the holidays, when we lived down in New York, up in New York, we'd go to that steak restaurant in Rye, New York. And it was steak and garlic Frankie bread, and Johnny's. Frankie and Johnny's. Yeah. And this huge meal. And we, I would starve myself before getting there because I, the onion rings, the garlic bread, everything. You know, we don't even eat steak hardly anymore. But that's what I used to do. And I used to always feel crappy. Now that we're clean eating, I would say... We feel great all the time. Whenever we have a big meal like that, we instantly go back to how we feel, felt, and I, you know we don't like it. So don't skip your meals so that you can overload at the big dinner or lunch. The twelfth tip would be be wary of buffet settings. You know, buffet settings in and of themselves lend themselves to people putting a little too much on their plates, right? One thing I would say, and I do this well, and I know my girls do this all the time, is kind of survey all your options before you start filling your plate. I do that. You do you? Oh, I scan from beginning to end. I, excuse oh. me, excuse me. I want to see what's there. What's so funny? I, I do. I just see you right there with your plate ready to go. No, you know, I've already scanned it. You oh. just, I got up ahead of time. Gotcha. Actually got the menu ahead of time. No, I. you're right. There... If you start at the beginning of the buffet line and you put a roll on and then all of a sudden you put on the, the next thing and a vegetable and a piece of beef and then a piece of chicken and then potatoes show up, you've got all of this food. You're never going to eat it all. Right. So I, I love that idea of scanning it ahead of time and you know in your head what you're going to take. Right. And, you and can how much you're going to take. Choose smaller portions of the higher calorie items. I mean, we all intuitively know... You know, let's be honest, sweet potatoes with marshmallows melted on top, pretty high calorie item, right? Sweet potatoes are good for you. I'm not saying they're not. My mom always made them with those marshmallows on top and then the sugar would get through them. And, you know, so maybe choose smaller portions of things like that and maybe resist the urge to try everything. Really hone in on what you're looking for. Right. So you show up at an event 
And there's hors d'oeuvres everywhere, you know, either past hors d'oeuvres or at someone's house. You know what's funny? What? I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have such a hard time at an event. I've never, even through all my corporate years, I never mastered the art of holding the cocktail, holding something to eat with the napkin. I can do it. I know. Yeah. You're a master at it. I was I always, oh, yeah. I always pass, pass, no thank you, pass, because I could never figure it out. I figured it out. I know. But I don't do it. We don't, we don't go to corporate events anymore. I know. We just I just, it, I remember kitchen. that. <laughs> but the whole point is, tip number 13, avoid mindless snacking. We talked earlier about what t- type of things to snack on, healthy things. But gosh, you know, you can get into a place and start grazing. And before you know it, you're full. But the big meal's coming. So you're going to force yourself to eat the prime rib or the turkey or the steak or whatever it is, the pasta the, uh, the fish, you're going to force yourself to eat the food that the host has been cooking all day. So you're just going to be in terrible shape. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, really be conscious of snacking while you're socializing because those calories and that food actually counts too. Right. And it reminds me of a story with my, my grandmother used to make during the holidays, a big pot of gravy. You call it spaghetti sauce. Yeah. We always called it gravy. You're special. And, and she would put a big piece of um, warm bread would sit next to it all day. She would, you know, toast a little bit and stuff. And that was to dip and continue to taste the gravy throughout the day. Well, by the time dinner came, we ate like an entire loaf of bread dipping it in the gravy. <laughs> so you have to, you know, and we weren't even conscious of that snacking that we did all day long. Well, the other thing you can do during this holiday season is to plan out your meals. We're, sometimes we get criticized or questioned. We plan everything because we want things to go well. We plan our exercise. We plan our meals. We plan shooting video. You know, we could do better at planning our meals. Well, in all honesty. Sunday nights, we always sit. We look up a couple recipes. Your Maddie just said she and her uh, boyfriend or Benjamin, Benjamin or trying two new recipes a week. What That's a, a great What a idea. great thing to do. Yeah. But planning your meals helps you avoid impulsive eating. Right. You, you know, you can prep and cook your meals in advance. You can include a, a, you can include a variety of local, of local, local vegetables from the, uh, what's the market we go to on Wednesday? The farmer's market. The farmer's market. Mm-hmm. So if you plan all of that out, you're going to eat smarter and better and you're going to eat the, the right kind of food. But you do have to adjust your plan for your holiday meals. Right. Right. So you want to make sure that you're adjusting the meals around the holiday meals so that you can, you know, plan for that. Typically, the holiday meals are all midday or later in the day. Right. So it really boils down to when you wake up, having the right type of breakfast and mid morning snack and maybe a lunch if it's a two or three or four, five o'clock meal so you don't walk in there starved or full. All right. So the 15th thing I would say is, and this one bodes to me really well, is watch out for liquid calories, not just alcoholic liquid calories, but beverages like eggnogs or lattes or, you know, things like that, that you don't drink any other time of year that tastes so good during the holidays. I interrupted her. Sorry. I know. Do you like eggnog? No. When, when When my kids were little, this is kind of funny, they couldn't for some reason say eggnog. So to this day, my three girls call eggnog Nick Knock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're well, like, knick-knock. hey, is there any Nick Knock? And, and nobody else knows what they're talking about. But for some reason, they couldn't but say But there's eggnog. a temptation right. to go and try these special drinks that people have. that got high sugar, high right. um, calories that you really don't need. That's so, exactly right. Again, throughout so the your day, <laughs> when you're at the, par- at the park, at the party, drinking a lot of water makes a lot of sense. If you're going to have an eggnog or a nicknock, <laughs> have water before and after it to dilute it a, a little bit. Right. You know, another really important um, tip during this holiday season is make sure you're getting enough sleep. Mm. And we talk about sleep all the time. Yeah. Probably exercise and sleep are two of the things that really are critical to us. But if you have a uh, lack of sleep, it's going to lead to poor eating choices because mm. you're tired, your head's not really clear, and you're hungry, right. right? Right. You really should aim for seven to eight hours. Everyone is certainly different, but of quality sleep. You know, establishing a regular sleep routine and avoid your heavy meals close to bedtime. Like you said, a lot of people move their holiday heavy meal, 
either midday or a little bit four or five yeah. yeah so it's a little bit earlier but remember your sleep affects your metabolism and your appetite regulation so sleep is a priority during the holidays as and, crazy as it all gets and if you're the host and you're in charge of when we when you're going to eat make it four or five o'clock don't make it or eight three or, or yeah but don't make it eight or nine o'clock yeah. at night if you sit down to eat at nine you're not finished till 11 and you're going to be a mess for days. So really trying to build it um, around your sleep is really, really important. Okay, the 17th thing, the 17th tip that we would say is try to really manage your stress levels. You know, stress can lead to emotional eating. We've all been there. We've seen it through the holidays and even other times throughout the year. So find ways to manage your stress, either through meditation or for me, it's my yoga practice. You know, stay connected to your supportive family and friends and take time for yourself to relax. You know, managing your stress levels is really important during the holidays. We're going to give you tips at the end, so make sure you stay for that. I think we we have three really good tips to uh, manage your stress, but this was always a problem for me. When I would get stressed out or anxious or feel behind or whatever it is, it would, it would lead me to have an Oreo cookie or a chocolate chip cookie, which are not allowed in the house anymore. Or fried chicken. Yeah, I don't do that anymore either. But I used to. I used to. That was the thing that yeah. when I was stressed, I would say, gosh, if I can have some of my comfort food, I'll feel better. Yeah. And frankly, now when I have comfort food, I don't feel better. So I've kind of right. worked through that. But, but I think it's a really good tip. The other thing is you really need to be kind to yourself. And what do we mean by that? Well, that's, you know, a lot of things. But number one, if you do lose it or you plan on you're going to someone's house and they cook the best prime rib or the best baked potatoes or whatever it is, just indulge and don't be so hard on yourself. Just do it and get over with, you know, get over it and don't lament about it because you're really trying to focus on long-term habits not short-term slip-ups. Right. And, you know, you have to practice some self-compassion and and learn from your setbacks and then move on, you know, and then celebrate your next first healthy choice. I like that. Right? It's a good idea. All All right. right. The 19th thing is to set realistic goals. Setting achievable goals for the holiday season is going to make you win, win, win. So focus on maintaining your weight rather than maybe losing weight. Just maintain and keep track of your eating and exercise habits. You know, celebrate your small victories and then adjust if you need more motivation. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, you need to set realistic goals for the food you're going to eat, the company you're going to be with, how much you're going to drink. If you're going to have wine, how much wine are you having? If you have a designated driver, that always bodes to you saying, well, it doesn't really matter how much I drink because I don't have to drive. But really just being realistic about what it is that's going to happen at that meal over the next week, the next 10 days. I know um, Evan and Hayden are coming down for New Year's weekend. You know, we're going to do a really good job of planning meals around that four or five days. New Year's Eve will probably have something really special. Right? I hope so. Yeah, Yeah. that'd be great. So, um, All right. The 20th and last tip we're going to give you before we move into some strategies is to reflect on your eating habits. You know, be mindful of why and how you eat. Maybe even keep a food journal if it's helpful. And reflect on your relationship with food. Don't use the holidays as the time to just let everything loose. Use the holidays as a learning experience on your eating habits. Yeah, I like this. So, um reflecting afterwards how we would just spend a whole uh, couple hours reflecting on how our thanksgiving went with all the kids who were down here five of our six kids were here and the amount of alcohol we bought the food that we cooked i mean we really did a great job of practicing what we're preaching today having a lot of vegetables a lot less heavy appetizers that were unhealthy and no one complained no so i think it's reflecting back on the only the only thing that that was a complaint is i had this amazing carrot cake and i put it in the freezer right and then i forgot about it and then fabio found it right and then the carrot cake was like all the rage because i forgot to bring it out during after the meal and you know desserts that's that's a problem for this family when we have desserts everybody eats it but As we promised, let's get into five key strategies to help you reduce stress during the holidays. The first one, we've touched on this a little bit, Mm -hmm. is really planning your meals in advance. Like we're going to plan our meals over the next month through the middle of January 
so that we're we'll never plan meals for a month. Yeah, we will. Never. I'm telling you right well, now, that is not a true well, statement. Well, we're going to do a <laughs> weekly menu. I'm going to do this. Are you? I am. Oh, because boy. I do most of the cooking, don't I? But you do zero of the shopping. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the <laughs> most well-prepared shopping list let's, that you've let's, ever Let's seen. manage this. Let's so set a to, weekly menu. Okay. Like not a month. So this Let's is how we, to a week. this is how we <laughs> reduce stress is that we disagree on what we're going to do and now I need to have Kentucky fried chicken. Nope. I'm stressed out. <laughs> Setting a weekly menu, you know, um, include healthy snacks in it. Fill the cabinet with healthy snacks. Get rid of the potato chips and the cookies. So all of that really will help your stress if you plan it out. If you go into the store ill prepared, you're going to buy stuff that you wish you had. Yeah, and it's fun to prep some meals in advance if you can. You know, unfortunately, our family, because we have a lot of dietary restrictions, you know, no cheese, no gluten, you know, no dairy, no eggs, you know, it's hard to, you know, I have a friend um, who plans her meals and she meal preps, but it's, you know, it's a nice, healthy vegetable lasagna. Our kids, we have so many challenges that we don't do those type of things. Well, the but challenges think, are uh, gluten-free, dairy-free, dairy free, free, egg-free, egg free, no yeah, cheese. Yeah. I mean, so you so have to be wary of that. Yeah, but but you have also have to be flexible in your planning. Right. I guess that's the key. Well, another way, and we've touched on this, another way to reduce your stress during the holiday season when you have all of these meals is really practice mindful eating. And I think that is a big change that I now do that has helped me in so many ways. I don't look at that plate of food and think I have to devour it. I just taste a few of the things. And, you know, I, I don't get overwhelmed with just walloping it down as quickly as I, as, as I can. You know, I think it's important to eat without distractions, chew slowly, listen to your hunger cues, and appreciate the food. Yeah. You know, and the the real kind of thing in mindful eating is practicing the portion control. Yeah, I love that. We don't need to load our plates up. Right. All right. Lastly, for stress, is staying hydrated. It might seem ridiculous, but there's sleep, there's hydration. Hydration is really important. You need to be drinking half your body weight in ounces. So that's 80 ounces of water for me every day. And I... You know, I do the best I can, right? but that really keeps me from being starved, right? But, you know, I surprised Mark yesterday as he was working late in the afternoon with an herbal tea. Oh, it was so good. I just, I was making a tea for myself because I'm fighting this cold, and I brought him back an herbal tea, and you loved it. With honey in it, and it's my new thing. I'm going to have it every day at 3 o'clock. Yeah, I think that? that's great. I think okay. that's great. Um, engaging in physical activity. We can't talk about this enough. Right. Daily exercise routine. I just changed mine up. We changed ours up. Again, you've been sick, but I now go, I'm going to go five days a week at 5 a.m. to Get Cat Fit, which is a boot camp here on Marco Island. And it's been amazing. Yeah. There's community, there's, there's encouragement. So it really has helped me really rethink how I feel feel how I look and how I'm going to eat because now I need to eat more protein, but I need to eat good foods. Right, right. And, and it's always good to include in that physical activity a post-meal walk. You know, every family that I know loves, unless there's a great football game on, loves to take a walk after dinner. Yep. You know, we lose a few folks to watching great football, but if we say, hey, let's all go for a walk, we don't have yep. many of them that, that drag behind. So good physical activity right. is going to reduce your stress. And the other thing to do is really, if you need some help, get some support and share your goals. Get a, not a weight loss buddy, but an... Um, a accountability partner accountability partner about your eating over or your eating and drinking and exercising and all of those kind of things that we talked about today get an accountability partner and share when you screw up share when you did a great job right. hold, hold each other accountable i think it really does help uh, you a lot to reduce your stress when you're doing this with somebody else right. and not alone Listen, we've given you a lot, so I think it would be important to maybe close with a challenge. Okay. All right. All right. Implementing some of these strategies can create a more relaxed and enjoyable eating experience during the holiday season, and that will help you with better health and well-being as you roll into the new year. So I hope you took some notes. Yep. There so, were 20 tips yep. and five strategies. And five strategies. And here's a, here's a call to action for you. You know, implement one tip each day. You know, I was always a big fan of the change one theory. You know, if you change one thing and, and build on that every day, it works. Right. 
Second thing, and you've heard this before, but that's why it's important you're hearing it again. Plan your meals and activities. This is so important to do. Take some time each week on Sunday night, plan your exercise, plan your meals, plan your sleep. What are you gonna do if you have TV shows you wanna watch? Really take some time on Sundays to plan out your week to help reduce your stress and feel good about yourself. And the third thing you can always do is reflect and adjust. You know, at the end of each week, reflect on your eating habits. How'd you do? Did you follow your tips? Do you need to adjust some strategies? And be kind to yourself through the process. Now, if you enjoyed this video, this next one entitled, Reduce Stress with Meditation. Now listen to me, I'm telling you, I'm gonna share with you the huge meltdown I had Oh, gosh. On my 50th birthday. Yeah, so eight years ago, huge meltdown and how meditation honestly almost saved my life. Well, it did save my life. Definitely saved our Although my life wasn't at risk. It saved saved our marriage. marriage. Watch this next video. You're going to love it. Reducing stress with meditation.